Okay, it's 5.30. I'm going to go ahead and call this Russ County Fiscal Court meeting to order August 9, 2021. I want to welcome everybody to being here. We're going to stand up and do the pledge to the flag, and then Brother Dennis Price will have our opening prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice for all. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, as we gather here in this place tonight, we come out of our love for you. And I pray, Lord, for the reason that we're here tonight is to do the county's business, the community's business. Lord, I pray your blessing upon Judge Robertson. I pray, Lord, you just give him wisdom on conducting these meetings and for all the physical court members. Lord, I just pray the same for them. And Lord, whatever is discussed here tonight, and to be honest with you, I have no idea what's going to be discussed, but I pray that whatever is discussed here tonight, Lord, it be done in a manner that's honoring and glorifying to you. If there's differences of opinion, that they would be able to be heard, but be heard in a respectful way from everybody who's here. So Lord, we just thank you for this community. During this time in our world where this uh, COVID and the pandemic and so many other things are changing, seems like on an hourly basis, Lord, we need to be unified, and we need to come together as one body under the headship of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, Lord, this is the this is the place. These are the people that we've elected to do the county's business. So, Lord, I'm thankful for them. I pray your blessing upon them. So come, Lord Jesus, come into this place tonight. Lead this meeting. Lord, you take control, and we'll give you the honor, the glory, the praise that you are truly worthy of. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Jim. Okay, first thing on the agenda, minutes of the last meeting. Copies. Everybody's got a copy in their packets. I'll make a motion we approve the minutes. I'll second it. Motion to measure Johnson, second to measure Richardson to approve the minutes of last month's meeting. Call the roll, please. Magistrate Richardson? Yes. Magistrate Waddell? Yes. Magistrate Johnson? Yes. Magistrate Holt? Yes. Magistrate Corner? Yes. Okay, the bills are in the packet. Was there any late bills? There, there were, and they have been passed around. Make a motion we pay the bills. I'll second. Motion with Magistrate Garner. Second with Magistrate Waddell to pay the bills. Call the roll, please. Magistrate Waddell. Yes. Magistrate Johnson. Yes. Magistrate Holt. Yes. Magistrate Garner. Yes. Magistrate Richardson. Yes. Okay, next we've got the detention center for Greater Dunbar. Our average inmate population was 112. Uh, fourth quarter corrections assistant check $8,477.83. Prescription copay $415.87. Nurse visits $96.99. House Bill 452, $245.85. House Bill 452 court costs $202.10. DUI fees $549.46. We had three st uh, state inmate housing checks which totaled $155,920. 38 cents. Social Security payment, $200. House Bill 413, $1,654.89. Traffic school, $111.93. We had three checks for housing Clinton County inmates totaling $29,532.65. Old bills collected, $113.04. Booking fees collected $1,367.63. We had a transport to LaGrange. Uh, fee claim was $178. Vending commission $26.94. Phone commission $4,091.52. Uh, Social Security reimbursement $136.18. Per diem collected $2,999.39. Interest $78.42. We had a carryover from last year of $385,886.71. Uh, budget transfer from the general, $362,418. And uh, transfer to the jail from the ABC, uh, $15,000. Uh, we had 69 hours overtime. And uh, when I left the jail, we had 49 state inmates, 7 Clinton County, 52 Russell County for a total of 108. Make motion to accept his report. 
I'll second it. Motion of measure Hope, second of measure Richardson to accept the detention center report. Call the roll, please. Magistrate Holt? Yes. Magistrate Garner? Yes. Magistrate Waddell? Yes. Magistrate Richardson? Yes. Magistrate Johnson? Yes. Okay, next we go to the first report. Sure, folks. The Russell County Sheriff's Department, July 2021 activity report. We had 570 911 calls for service. We had 11 1045 accidents with no injuries. We had three 1046 accidents with injuries. We made 32 traffic stops in the county. There was 56 officer re requests. Had 24 welfare checks in the county. We also did 21 lockouts. Had 62 arrests. Had seven mental health transports, five to Eastern State, one back home, one to Rivendell. We had 107 court papers received. We drove a total of 1,233 miles to Fort Security Dead for transport miles. Had 57 criminal civil summonses served. Also in, the, in July, our two school resource officers, Russell Spring, which is Nathan Gannon, and our Richard Franciano from Salem Elementary attended the Level SR1 training course in Orlando, Florida, as required by the Federal COPS grant. They also attended the Level 1 course by the Department of Criminal Justice as required by, by Kentucky. They completed both those classes and they're excited to begin a new, new school year with the students as well. Also, we've had several express interest in the position for school resource office for uh, Jamestown Elementary. If we get the grant, the federal grant, we probably won't know about uh, September, October probably, whether it can be filled or not, but we appreciate the physical court here. <coughs> Russell County School Board, the City of Jamestown, of course, my office having a plan B in place just in case uh, grant don't go through. It was my intention maybe to try to have one to start in the start of the school year, but unfortunately we've got to wait till notification of the grant either way. So we appreciate everyone's help in that, especially your alls. Uh, also, a reminder on the 28th of August at uh, nine o'clock we've got a charity ride for the for uh, several, well, there's five county sheriffs involved, Cumberland County, Clinton, Adair, uh, Adair, Russell, and Casey. Kickstands up at nine o'clock, we'll be leaving Jamestown City Park, and we'll be back also at the Jamestown City Park for a cookout afterwards, and it's about 121 miles or a ride we're gonna have. So, appreciate everybody that's donated, all the sponsors that we've that we've received as far as sponsorship and everything so far. We appreciate everybody. Thank you, Eric. Need a motion to accept his report. I make a motion to accept the sheriff's report. Magistrate Richardson. I'll second. Second, Magistrate Waddell. Call the roll, please. Magistrate Johnson. Yes. Magistrate Holt. Yes. Magistrate Garner. Yes. Magistrate Richardson. Yes. Magistrate Waddell. Yes. The next we've got our trade with monthly settlement court and uh, AE transfers that were already pretty approved. Ending balance in the general fund was one million two hundred eighty four thousand two hundred thirty eight dollars and thirty four cents. Ending balance in the road fund was two hundred forty four thousand five hundred forty eight dollars and nineteen cents. <coughs> Ending balance in the jail fund was seven hundred fifty thousand eight hundred twenty five dollars and sixty eight cents. Ending balance in the LGEA fund was eleven thousand four hundred seventy three dollars and twenty eight cents. Ending balance in the ASAP fund was $134,406.59. Ending balance in the grants fund was zero. Ending balance in the emergency shelter fund was $4,243.95. Ending balance in the tourism fund was $49,728.04. Ending balance in the dispatch fund was $99,256.84. Ending balance in the airport fund was $127,128.01. Ending balance in the airport project fund was $9,613.21. Ending balance in the DFC fund was $12,101.21. Ending balance in the airport board fuel fund was $40,257.42. Ending balance in the airport terminal project was zero. Ending balance in the ABC fund was $43,059.20. And the ending balance in the ARPA fund was $1,741,513.08. For total ending balance of all funds at $4,552,393.04. Thank you. Make a motion to accept it. 
AE transfers and improve proofs. So we've got a motion for Magistrate Garner. I'll second. Second, second uh, for Magistrate Richardson. Call the roll, please. Magistrate Holt? Yes. Magistrate Garner? Yes. Magistrate Richardson? Yes. Magistrate Waddell? Yes. Magistrate Johnson? Yes. Okay, next we've got our first reading of the budget amendment ordinance 2106. There will not be a vote tonight, Mr. Reed. This is ordinance 2106, an ordinance relating to the fiscal year 2122 annual budget and amendment thereof. Whereas the Russell County Fiscal Court has realized unbudgeted receipts from the following funds, be it ordained by the Russell County Fiscal Court of the Commonwealth of Kentucky in Section 1, the budget for fiscal year 2122 is amended to increase slash decrease the receipts of the following funds to include unbudgeted receipts from the Grants Fund, account number 07-4504-002, which is the CDBG Utility Assistance Grants, in the amount of $200,000. And Section B, appropriation side, it's in the Grants Fund, account number 07-5076-548, which is also CDBG, a utility assistance grant in the amount of $200,000. Section 2, the amounts adjusting the revenue accounts in Section 1 are for governmental purposes only. Okay, that is the first three, and there won't be a vote on it tonight. And next, we've got the second reading ordinance 2105 budget amendment, and there will be a vote on it tonight. This is Budget Ordinance 2105, an ordinance relating to the fiscal year 2122 annual budget and amendment thereof, whereas the Russell County Fiscal Court has realized unbudgeted receipts from the following funds. Be it ordained by the Russell County Fiscal Court of the Commonwealth of Kentucky in Section 1, the budget for fiscal year 2122 is amended to increase slash decrease the receipts of the following funds to include unbudgeted receipts from the general fund, account number 014901-000, which is a prior year carryover in the amount of $200,339.81. In the jail fund, account number 03-4901-000, which is prior year carryover in the amount of $79,947.71. In the LGEA fund, account number 04-4901-000, which is prior year carryover in the amount of $2,929.39. In the Emergency Shelter Fund, account number 11-4901-000, which is prior year carryover in the amount of $3,243.78. In the Tourism Fund, account number 76-4901-000, <coughs> which is prior year carryover in the amount of $7,343.30. In the ABC fund, account number 83-4901-000, which is prior year carryover in the amount of $20,445.54. In the ARPA fund, account number 84-4901-000, which is prior year carryover in the amount of $1,741,365.18. Total amended revenues are $2,055,614.71. Appropriations in Section B, General Fund 01-9200-999, which was reserved for transfer in the amount of $200,339.81. In the Jail Fund, account number 03-9200-999, reserved for transfer in the amount of $79,947.71. In the LGEA Fund, account number 04-9200-999, reserved for transfer in the amount of $2,929.39. In the Emergency Shelter Fund, account number 11-9200-999, reserved for transfer in the amount of $3,243.78. In the Tourism Fund, account number 76-9200-999, reserved for transfer in the amount of $7,343.30. In the ABC Fund, account number 83-9200-999, reserved for transfer in the amount of $20,445.54. In the ARPA fund, account number 84-9200-999, reserved for transfer in the amount of $1,741,365.18. Total amended appropriations are $2,055,614.71. Section 2, the amounts adjusting the revenue accounts in Section 1 are for governmental purposes only. That's the second reading that ordinance. We need a motion to pass section. <coughs> I make a motion, Judge. Motion of Magistrate Holt. I'll say. Second, Magistrate Waddell. To pass the second reading mm -hmm. ordinance 2105 budget amendment. Call the roll, please. Magistrate Johnson. Yes. Magistrate Holt. Yes. Magistrate Garner. Yes. Magistrate Richardson. Yes. Magistrate Waddell. Yes. 
Okay, next I had uh, Jeff Dick with Kentucky Department of Transportation District 8. He called today. Uh, what that is, they're getting some right of ways <coughs> that had been on some roads that were used to be county roads that had been turned back over to the county where the state had done improvements. And uh, they've got several that are going through what they we need to do all that in one resolution when he gets it together, just accepting the right of ways to these roads where they've been state work on all these county roads approaches and stuff. He said he'd have those try to have them down here in September and we could do it all in one day. Yeah, and have a yeah I, I talked to him a couple of times, you know, there that uh, one of them's over there, I think, on that snow road. It is. And then mm -hmm. there's some others that he found later, so he wants to do them all at once. So, so he'll be here in September. Okay, uh, next we've got Mr. Aaron Pointer with the Cumberland's Workforce. Him and Miss uh, Meyer Wilson here. Good, Masters. Members of the court, Mr. Pointer, I'm Aaron Pointer. I'm the Director of Reentry Programming for the Cumberland's Workforce Board. Uh, this is Ms. Myers, and she is the Director of Workforce for the Cumberland's Workforce Board. Um, what you'll see before you is a joint venture between the Cumberland's Workforce Development Board, uh, hopefully Russell County, and then the City of Jamestown, the City of Russell Springs. Uh, we have piloted and developed, uh, with a partner of ours, a web-based application uh, named CARES, as you'll see on the front of the binder there, is Kentucky Access uh, Kentucky Area Resources. Uh, and the goal of this web-based application is to put the access to resources for members of our community at their fingertips, no matter where they're at. Uh, if you'll flip over, I'm going to talk through it, and, and as we go through, I'm going to address things. But on slide two, if you want, we'll. Uh, right now, you can go to www.cares.us, and it's going to pull up the beta version of this web-based application. Um, we are able to, or the goal is for, for this to be a user-friendly and easy way to navigate the resources that are present here in Russell County. Um, and I'll go through you know, a couple of examples as we go on. Um, if you'll go to slide three, if, if you select the Explore option on that main page, uh, you're able to access and, and put input information uh, just really basic, name, a phone number, an email, and you're able to gain access and review and look through the different options of resources, uh, whatever they will be, uh, within our community, within Russell Springs, Russell County. Uh, if an individual is repeatedly accessing this, we are tracking that on the back end. Uh, me and my staff will be able to do that. And if somebody's coming two, three, four times in a set period of time, I'm going to be able to see that. And perhaps maybe we would need to reach out to that individual and ask them, is there something that we can help you with to put a sustainability plan in place so they can you know, become self-sufficient and not have to access these resources repeatedly? And if you look at slide four, that's just, again, like I said, name, phone number, and an email. Somehow that we'll be able to track and see who is accessing and viewing these resources. On slide five, once you provide that, you know, that basic data, you're able to access the main resources page. And, and what those are called, as you're seeing, that those are cards. Those are the different organizations that are present within Russell County that offer resources to individuals. Food, clothing, housing, uh, emergency shelter, uh, mental health resources, uh, of course the career training and, and, and just other community-based or and faith-based organizations for that assistance. Uh, this information is strictly confidential. It's only able to be viewed by my staff and I. Uh, and they are going to be able to review um, the entire catalog of cards, okay? Uh, and that's just the, the first basic uh, page they can access. Now, uh, if you'll notice on the top, you'll see a search bar. If they have specific needs that they want to search and not have to look through all of them, they're going to be able to select food. Uh, maybe if they have a substance use problem or an addiction problem, they're going to be able to type that into that search bar and it's going to populate and pull up those specific needs and they're going to be able to, uh, to access that information right, at the, you know, right on their phone, right on any way that they can access this web-based app. Uh, and you'll see on slide six, you know, 
uh, that's that's the ones that the career assistance is my main goal and our main goal is to increase workforce participation that's that's my target that's why I go to work every single day uh, but if individuals are you know food insecure if they are shelter insecure they're not worried about going to work you know we have to address and fix and put a sustainability plan in place to empower these individuals to get them back into the workforce um, and you'll see you know on slide seven eight uh, those are a, an example of the different cards that we can pull up and the individual will be able to see so uh, on slide nine you'll see uh, the selection for God's food pantry everybody here is probably aware of God's food pantry their address how to get a hold of them uh, that individual can click on God's food pantry and if they're on a mobile device or a phone they're able to call them right there. They can click that number and they're connected with, uh, uh, with, with who they need to talk to about their food insecurity. Uh, they can also select the address, which is highlighted. If you're on a mobile device, it's gonna map you exactly there from wherever you're at. Uh, if you're on a desktop or a laptop computer, it's gonna pull up the map, which is the next slide uh, that you can see. And also with that, you're gonna be able to see hours of operation. You're gonna be able to see maybe who is the primary point of contact. Uh, and this is all information that will be supplied by these individual resources that we're going to make available literally to anybody uh, that needs it in Russell County. Uh, so slide 10, like I said, that's the, the map example. And I'll, I'll transfer over and, and on slide 11, that's our monitoring. Um, everything comes with, with monitoring, data tracking, knowing who's utilizing it, what is being utilized. Uh, we track data very heavily uh, in, at the Carmel Workforce Board. And so, uh, slide 12, you're gonna see an example of tracking hits to the website for that app <coughs> per day. We can also pull that by month and see how many individuals are making use of this application uh, for any set time. Um, slide 13, we're gonna be able to see those individuals uh, by their intake data, by what they're filling out, we're able to see that, that Aaron Pointer accesses it every Monday. Okay, or, or how frequently Aaron Pointer is accessing these, these resources. Uh, and again, we can choose uh, to reach out and say, hey, you know, is there an underlying cause for this? Is there something we can do that will prevent them from having food insecurity, you know, every month or every other week or so? And so if you look at slide 14, that's, being a, that's us being able to pull up uh, an individual's card so we can look up and see how we can reach out. How can we contact this individual? So, slide 15, it gets a little bit more in depth. This is if an individual uh, selects the request assistance. That means they're reaching out. They want somebody to, um, to, to contact them and to help them through whatever situation that they're facing. Um, you, as you can tell, and over the next couple slides, there's the information that we're collecting. We're collecting uh, from an intake form, the barriers that, that I've seen over you know my tenure here at the, the workforce board of what needs to be addressed. So I can put, my staff can put together a game plan for sustainability. Um, and you can look and see the information that we connect, uh, that we collect. Um, and like I said, this is just used that we'll have a plan. So when I call um, that individual, when my staff calls that individual, we're able to say, we can knock this out one, two, three, four, and five steps, or however many steps that it takes. And we've been tremendously successful uh, doing that. And so 16, 17, and 18, those slides, uh, that's just showing the demo what we collect. You know, what I need to know, what uh, my staff needs to know before we ever make that initial phone call. Because um, I like calling with answers. We like calling with solutions rather than asking questions. Uh, slide 19, of course, this is new. Uh, there's nothing like this anywhere. We, we are we're trailblazers in this. And Russell County is home to me. Uh, I'm raising my family here. I call, you know, I'm, I love it here. Can't get me out of here. And I want to make this better. And what better place is to pilot than home? Uh, I see the need. You know, over, over my time here at the Workforce Force, I have seen that we have people in our communities that need help, that need assistance. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a few minutes. But we're going to need marketing um, that we're going to take care of. Social media, newspapers, radio, however we can get the word out. I want our partners. I want 
uh, God's food pantry. I want Second Mile. I want Goodwill. All of these um, resources that are here, I want them to know about each other, and I want people to know about them because that's the only way we can take advantage of them. That's the only way we can help people with a hand up instead of a hand down. Uh, so that's what I say. We'll, we'll do a heavy marketing campaign when this goes live. Um, and, and again, if you go to slide 20, you'll see the utility. Our ultimate goal, like I said when I started, it is to provide members of our community access to the resources they need. We know that they're here. Um, our mind, uh, you know, when you think about this, you're going to, to the homeless individuals that we see or that we get calls about. Well, our mind goes to the people uh, that are leaving the detention center, the people that uh, the sheriff's office interacts with. Um, I'm here to tell you that there's an individual with the same exact degree that I have, um, works for the state, that has reached out to our office, that we help with food insecurity through this pandemic and through the situation. Uh, and, and that breaks my heart, uh, just as, as, a, as a person. It could be me, has the same exact education that I do, uh, work history very similar to the one I have. Uh, and it's not just the individuals that you see, it's the individuals that you don't see. Um, and, and really, that, that speaks volumes to me. But it's reaching out and providing the hand to individuals all across the spectrum. Um, so uh, with that, they're provided case management by the appropriate entity. We're connecting them directly with who they need to be talking to to, fix the, to find a solution, to fix these problems that we're seeing and we're hearing about, and some that we don't even think about. Um, and I'll be honest, and I think about this, is a lot, often, it's, it's not just an individual problem, it's a family problem. <clears throat> You're fixing, you know, entire family groups. Um, and I've seen that on a daily basis. And again, like I said, our ultimate goal is workforce participation, which is going to boost our economy, which is going to help our businesses. Um, the referrals that are getting and the connection of resources, that's, a, that's assisting the businesses and the uh, organizations that are already in place here in our community. Um, I come from a law enforcement background, and so resource saving. You know, I think about the times uh, that was that, that law enforcement spends uh, trying to find a solution for people, trying to come up and, and, and fix problems that aren't necessarily criminal in nature. But this family needs help. Uh, I've been in houses, and I'm sure you know sheriff can, can speak to that as well, uh, where these people need help. And being able to provide them that information and access to that information would be tremendous on a call. Uh, you really feel like you're doing that next level, that next step to take care of the members of our community. Uh, E911 will be able to supply, either look it up themselves at the dispatch console or supply that information to uh, individuals calling in need where they don't need to dispatch a deputy or an officer out to, to fix a problem or to address a problem. Uh, and like I said, we're going to be able to monitor the uses of resources, uh, and I'll report back to you as frequently as you'd like. But as much as y'all want to see me, I'll come share it with you because I know it's going to be effective because it already is effective. But what, you know, this is just an addition and a magnification of the things that we're doing. Um, I'll report, uh, like I said, as much as we need. Uh, and also with that, I want to ensure that the people that are not taking advantage of it. We have people that would take advantage of, of the kindness of the organizations and the faith-based organizations and, and individuals. I don't want that. I don't want to have re repeat customers. I want to fix it. We want to fix it. So, um, and again, that just goes to the accountability monitor. And, and on slide 21, there's a cost to this, as we all know. And I, I provided a cost breakdown. Um, the total cost to build what you're viewing on the slides is $4,500, and that's covered by the Workforce Board. We know it works. We believe in it. We have fronted the cost to build it for Russell County. Um, the plan would be next budget year to, um, as you'll see, you know, next year and for the next, the next three years, uh, it would be $14,400. Uh, to have and maintenance and, and have this thing uh, run and be able to be used by our community. Uh, my goal and my intention is to split that three ways between the county, uh, the city of Jamestown, and uh, the city of Russell Springs. Um, to do that, it's going to be $4,800 per entity. 
uh, for three years, and that takes care of everything. We do all the monitoring, uh, the connecting, the um, all the workload, the maintenance, and so on and so forth, uh, and that wouldn't start until the next budget year. However, um, this month, uh, we're going to go live with it. Uh, and there is maintenance fees and domain fees and, and, and things of that nature that go into this. Um, and so from August 2021 to June 2022, uh, for this pilot to be completed and us to search forward, um, we, we have to pay for the domain and the hosting and, and all that. And the cost is $400 a month or $4,000 initially split between the three entities. I have intentions on going before the city, city council of Jamestown, the city council of Russell Springs, and giving them the same presentation uh, and asking for their part. Uh, it's $1,333.33 uh, for this, uh, for this pilot to get going. Um, and so I'm requesting that the, the, we are requesting that the county fund one third of the initial phase of the rollout at that $1,333. Uh, and then the three year contract to be for consideration. Uh, next fiscal year for the next budget and that would be the forty eight hundred dollars that i discussed earlier um, and, and really this is something i added i didn't i didn't type this on my notes but i want to share this with you to give you a little bit of perspective and then i'll, I'll sit down um, over the region since august of last year 669 individuals have contacted me or miss myra in our office needing help okay i'm going to leave that really broad in Russell County alone, since August, uh, 210 residents of Russell County have contacted our office needing help. Uh, uh, we have an 81% success rate of connecting individuals with who they need and get them the help that they need. And we have a 76.9% positive employment outcomes just in Russell County. Uh, taking all other counties that I cover into consideration, that's really good. Um, the resources are here. Uh, I think we have a good, a good launch pad for this. And my intention is to take this and not only make Russell County an example, uh, but a pilot uh, to be trailblazers and to take this statewide. Uh, I have the capability. I have the data that will prove it. I promise you this works. Uh, so. This uh, monitoring system, now it sort of protects where that way the same people don't use it over and over absolutely i will be i will be able to view it every single day <coughs> and individuals per weekend or an extreme emergency uh, they will be contacted within you know one business day of uh, their intake on the form uh, that's just the way that, that we do business uh, we've done it this way uh, for a while uh, i think that's what adds to our success um, as a program, we've been successful enough that I actually have staff now to support that. Um, again, you know, we've proven the proof of concept. We want to take it and, and expand. You see the people that are referred to us. Uh, we want to reach the other people. We want to reach everybody uh, that needs it. And again, this is not. I mean, this is for this is for our citizens, for our community. Have you um, dealt with the courts, um, like Kevin? Through the county absolutely, county. a portion of those. Uh, uh, referrals do come uh, from Mr. Shear's office. Uh, also come in and exiting uh, incarceration. Um, I have data that would support the numbers from, from their specific entities. But uh, again, this is, it spreads. Um, and, and it's not only an individual. I'm talking about specific individuals that I've come into contact with. I'm not talking about the families that we've uh, helped support. Uh, because a lot of times if dad needs help, well, dad, mom, and however many children, uh, it just, it's a compounding thing, you know, um, and it's a situation that, that I hope that none of us are ever in, but uh, I, you know, I have a heart for it, and, and I believe in it, and I really, uh, I have seen it be successful. I will add the things we've piloted in this county, it's being recognized by the state. Mr. Shear's been on many calls with us, and they're looking at what we've done here and how can they replicate it across the state. I think if it helps people here in the county or whatever, I think it would be a good thing. I don't have a problem with it. I would. So we'll put it next year when we do our budget, we'll try to do the 4,800. But right now you're assessing 13, 33, 33. Yes, uh, which that, I will also request from uh, both cities within the county. That, that uh, 
you anticipate help from both cities on it, do you? I, I do. Um, they're going to get the same presentation uh, that I just provided here. Um, the data, of course, will grow because I'm going to be honest with y'all, it grows every single day. Um, these numbers, they'll be different tomorrow. Um, and then Thursday, when I go to uh, Russell Springs, they'll be different. Um, that's what, that's, that's the goal. You know, we want that increase. Uh, I can tell you that the numbers of intakes will be different, but also the number of completed and successes will also be different. Um, I make a motion we get the money, Judge. Motion by Major Richardson. I'll second. I'll second. Major Garner to go ahead and give a 1333 30 right now, and then we'll deal with it in the budget like in May of next year. Absolutely. And at your request, any of y'all can reach out to me. Um, I, I can provide my contact information. I'm easy to get a hold of. I will share any data uh, needed, and uh, I will present it, you know, the results uh, closer to next year's budget, if y'all. And nothing else. So I thank you. Call the roll. Please. Magistrate Garner. Yes. Magistrate Richardson. Yes. Magistrate Johnson. Yes. Magistrate Waddell. Yes. Magistrate Holmes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next, we need to set uh, our county tax rates for the coming year. Uh, real property. It's been what six point seven for many years. Watercraft and uh, motor vehicles are 9.26 per so, Hearing motions, anything different I, than that? I'm going to make the motion to keep them the same, but I'd like to say something about that. I've been getting several calls about that where the property, I guess, the valuation has gone up on it, and people are getting tax bills, and they've gone, they've gone up, and I'm getting calls on that. It's not what we've raised it, it's just the property value's gone up. But I'm going to make a motion we keep it the same. I'll second. Motion by Major Johnson, second by Major Waddell to leave the county tax rates, which there's about, what, eight different uh, tax and special government entities in the county, but to leave our portion the same, which is 6.7 cents per $100 and 9.2 cents on watercraft and motor vehicles per $100. <coughs> uh, called well Magistrate Richardson? Yes. Magistrate Waddell? Yes. Magistrate Johnson? Yes. Magistrate Garner? Yes. Magistrate Holt? Yes. The legislature changed some stuff last year where these special government uh, entities, if they turn in, always before they be shared it with us. We do now have the opportunity if they raise it, and we've got 30 days to make a decision where we approve it or not. <coughs> So that's a little bit more teeth. The courts have got in than they've had in the past. Saying that, we've got two of those uh, entities here tonight to, to present their tax rates. One of them is the Russ County Health Department, and the other one's uh, Russ County Extension Service. So, Jane, you want to bring the health departments up? Since I'm with the health department, um, I am masked for my protection annually. Um, so um, on February 8th of this year, our local board met and approved our tax rate for this year. Um, it did remain the same as it has for the past several years, or at least the same as it has been since I have been there. Um, it is 4.5 cents per $100 uh, for real property, personal property, and motor vehicles across the board. <laughs> That's pretty much all we have. So um, we have to submit, like I say, we don't uh, yeah. we present it. If there is an increase uh, in it, then we've got 30 days to decide we won't accept the increase. In this mm -hmm. case, you know, no. so. Okay, thank you, Jane. Right, thank you. Okay, next we've got the extension service, West County Extension Service, Mr. John Oates. Good afternoon. Uh, on Wednesday, August the 4th, the Russell County Extension District Board uh, members voted to keep their property or their tax rates the same, with real property being 3.801, personal property being 6.3173, and motor. A vehicle and watercraft is 2.39. Thank you. Thank you, John.
they like to say they just share those with us unless there's an increase and we've got the option to turn it down if there is an increase. Uh, next, we've got to transfer $1,276.21 from the dispatch to the ambulance service. That's a what, enhanced Medicaid payment, is that correct? That's that new thing that it, we did last month, and we're going to continue to do that until he gets the, the EMAR stuff straightened out. So it automatically goes to them. them. Yeah. Okay. So, so we, need to, we need to do that transfer. It's oh my God. I'll second. Motion to Major Garner, second to Major Whatever, transfer $1,276.21 <coughs> from the dispatch to the ambulance service. Enhanced Medicaid payment. Call the roll, please. Magistrate Garner? Yes. Magistrate Richardson? Yes. Magistrate Johnson? Yes. Magistrate Waddell? Yes. Magistrate Holt? Yes. Okay, next we've got our interlocal road agreement. It's a yearly agreement we do with the uh, city of Jamestown. I think we've done the city of Russell Springs back in what, July or mm -hmm. June? So they're sort of off uh, different times. So this one's with the city of Jamestown. It's something we do yearly with the fiscal court in the city. I'll make a motion if you need I'll second. It. Motion to measure what else? Second to measure hope to approve this inter, interlocal road agreement with the fiscal court in the city yes. of Jamestown. Call the road, please. Magistrate Johnson? Yes. Magistrate Holt? Yes. Magistrate Garner? Yes. Magistrate Richardson? Yes. Magistrate Waddell? Yes. Okay, next we've got uh, E911 interlocal agreement. We do that yearly. Uh, since Last year, so there have been some changes through the legislature. I'll let uh, County Turbo share and explain his duties and how we're restructuring the management of that. The uh, legislature changed the way that it's, it's been set up or the, the board can be set up. Um, and just to, just to, I guess, boil it down to what, what the changes are. Is that they the state the the legislature has allowed it to be less of a law enforcement type of board and more of a you know a county city cooperation if, if indeed that that's what's happening here and it is and the, the 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 new board would be represented by the the, the sheriff the mayor of Jamestown the mayor of Russell Springs the emergency management management director and the chairman of the EMS board which are all funding entities of, of this uh, interlocal agreement. Um, I will be, well my office, or I will be the uh, link uh, uh, official, the link 911 coordination official. Uh, that will be coming out of my office as far as all the paperwork and all the logistics regarding that. So to make sure that we are in compliance with that. So I, I have been that for a little bit. Uh, and I just, I, I told them I would continue that, that procedure that we make sure that, that all that is taken care of. So, uh, do, you, do you want me to get into the rest of the agreement? Yeah, you can say, well, I've got uh, both entities giving 10000 more this year. Yeah. Um, and service isn't because we're using their building. Basically. Yeah. Yeah, basically in the, in the agreement, um, um, the city of Jamestown and the city of Russell Springs oh will be increasing their um, uh, portion from 25 uh, thousand to thirty-five thousand each. So that will increase uh, their percentage, uh, and they will have, and they will be on the board uh, for for that purpose. So that's really all the changes that I, I'm aware of within the the new agreement. It's just reorganization of the of the board, uh, as well as reflecting the additional funding of the two cities. And we have to do this yearly with both cities and everybody Each, vote to sign off and then absolutely. go to the Attorney and General. Yeah, the, um, I've, I've signed off on it as well as um, each city will have to sign off on it. And again, we have to re-up it every year. Does that have anything to do with our, our interlocal agreement with each city? No, okay. this, this, this would be a special one just for, special. The, just for the E911 that we re-up every year. The, again, the only reason that we're changing it is that now when we started this, you know, it could only be a com composition of uh, law enforcement officials, which included myself, Mr. Leverage, um, uh, Mr. Dunbar, but now it doesn't have to be that way. And had to they be 80 had, had to be 80 percent law enforcement. So that's not the case anymore. They changed the, 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 the regulations on that. So based upon the, the city's contributions, uh, uh, not that me and uh, 
Bobby and Matthew mind, but it's you know it's it's better represented if, if the cities are on there as well, in my opinion. They've got money now, invested in it. They've got money invested in it. And, and again, I'm I'm still involved from the standpoint of the link and making sure everything everybody's in compliance. So. If if they if they have a question about it, then where does it go? I'm I'm speaking in terms of the two cities. Are are well, they on board? They're on the board. Yes, okay. they're, they're, they're each city yes. on the board. Yeah. Okay. So their they, police department's got problems. They need to go to their mayor and let him bring it to them. That's right. So everybody's Same got, way the ambulance service. Just like as as they're putting their money in, they've got skin in the game. So, if, you know, if they okay. have an issue, they can address it in the board meeting. Well, won't this help on maybe employees maybe sure. getting a better Absolutely. Hey, and, and, and again, we gave them a two in the budget, two dollar right. And I and I and I, I spoke with the sheriff about it as well. You know, they they deal with this, right? The the the, the cities and the law enforcement <coughs> agencies within both cities, so they have a direct uh, uh, link with that. So I, I think it's I think it's a good move. If my Derek's mind. deputies have got a problem, they'll go to Derek and he'll bring it to the board. Same way with the fire departments and rescue squad, they'll go to H M. He'll bring. It. I think it's a good thing, and I think that it'll help keep employees there I too. I do too. But we need a motion to approve that, and then we'll send it to both cities. I'll make a motion to approve it. Motion to measure Garner, second measure what else? Approve this uh, 911 interlocal agreement. Call the roll, please. Magistrate Holt? Yes. Magistrate Garner? Yes. Magistrate Richardson? Yes. Magistrate Johnson? Yes. Magistrate Waddell? Yes. Okay, next we've got a rocket docket coming up for renewal. Uh, Commonwealth Attorney. Yeah, we have it. They all have a copy of the agreement. So you've got the, uh, we do this every year. This is what uh, the, the outline you're used to see <coughs> as far as the number of participants. Um, you, you'll notice that the number of people participating in the program was down this year uh, by roughly 10 people. this year which did lead to a smaller um, overall savings that said um, this is still fairly high compared to the first three or four years that we uh, did this still a fairly substantial savings um, <coughs> overall I think to the county budget cost stayed the same as far as we know I I would guess that it's probably a little bit higher. At this point. Where you, I'm using the same numbers. Okay. The last time Bobby and I talked about that, um, he thought it was the same. Um, there's no indication that it's officially changed, but I, everything's been going up in the last yeah. year or so. So I assume that those costs have gone up. Any increase is not reflected here. We're still operating on it. Costs twenty six dollars a day to house a county. Well, this seems to have worked pretty good in the past, so I'll make a motion we continue it. I'll second. Motion to measure Johnson, second to measure Hope to continue this contract. Another year, memorandum of agreement with uh, uh, Mr. Leverage. Call roll, please. Magistrate Johnson? Yes. Magistrate Holt? Yes. Magistrate Garner? Yes. Magistrate Richardson? Yes. Magistrate Waddell? Yes. Mr. Leverage? Thank you. Uh, I know you all do a good job with this. I like that. What can you see different this year from your very first year? The very first year? From, I think overall there's more awareness. I mean, like we, we get calls at the office. People's parents, grandparents, loved ones, family members will call us. Bobby's got the people asking them 
about this because he's called me with people who want to know how do I get my son, daughter, loved one, somebody involved in this program. We, we get those calls. So I think just awareness makes a big difference. Uh, that's what I think was the last couple of years. Just last <coughs> year before, we saw some pretty big increases, like 30 participants, 30, 40 participants, and that, which was a big jump. Uh, and I think that was largely based on awareness. This year it's down for, I think, a number of factors. Um, the legislature changed the way that bail is assessed in district court, um, which is where all of our case, the felony cases in district court, so that's where ours come from. Um, and, and because of the way bail is assessed, <coughs> that just changed the number of people available that, that are eligible to participate. Because uh, if they're not in jail, then they're not really eligible, eligible to participate because the county's not paying for you to be there. I think that uh, some folks will maybe believe that because of COVID, we didn't have a grand jury event for a long time, uh, for over a year. And so I think that, that was a big decrease because frankly, people sitting in jail know that they cannot be indicted in the next 60 days because we were not allowed to have a grand jury. So I think that drove the numbers down a little bit. Since, we, since the grand jury has been meeting regularly again, our uh, participation has gone up in the last three months. So I, I think some of, some of those factors have been driving the, uh, the participation in the last last year. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, man. Okay, uh, next we've got uh, resolution 2109. It's a K-9 vehicle grant. Do you want to say something about that? Basically, uh, oh, yeah. We've got a dog, we've got two dogs, actually, the bomb dog and the uh, canine drug dog. Haven't got a, a vehicle, per se, for it that's, that's could be used for canine use. Basically, we've got a little, I guess, small kennel sitting inside of an SUV, and we're, need, we're putting in a, for a grant, it will pay for fund, funding of the vehicle grant. I think we've got two or three uh, bids per se out there for them. Like it's, if it's fully funded or something, it'll be taken care of through the grant. So you just need our permission to, to, go, to go on this and go on with this. I make a motion. I'll second, second it. Motion of Master Garner, second of Master Richardson to give them permission to pursue this grant. Call the roll, please. Magistrate Waddell? Yes. Magistrate Johnson? Yes. Magistrate Holt? Yes. Magistrate Garner? Yes. Magistrate Richardson? Yes. Okay, next is uh, Resolution 2110 and the Memorandum of Agreement for the Flex Funding for this year. Uh, we've got two roads that were done partially last year that were sent back in and they're continuing them. I think Harbor Springs and uh, McLennan Ridge, getting both of them finished up. The other one's Lily Creek Ramp Road and Paul Jones Drive. Those are the ones and it's what, 200 and I don't have that figure in front of uh, It's 210000 Two, uh, yeah. Which is, the estimate's on just a little bit more than oh. that, but those are the four roads that There was another road, Melson Ridge, and Campbell Road were both sent in. <coughs> they didn't they didn't approve it. Campbell Road was bad. They didn't look at them. Well, That's why they didn't approve Campbell Road was bad. It's got the only house or two on there. They several have it on it. Down on the lower end, you go down there and turn left. The left's a different road. Yeah, I drove it. Yeah, but you've got to get, go down that yeah, to get true. to it. But it's a different road. Yeah. Mountain but Ridge, it goes all the way through to Dare County. Yeah, yeah. Jones, Dare County. But that Campbell is bad, isn't it? But those were all sent in, those were before. Did they come and look at these at those roads? Uh, the state transportation people, the engineers, yeah. They grade them. That's what I. That one road bad. Yeah. I, drove it up there I, I can't hardly believe they'd look at it and not approve it. I mean, if they approved anything. The only reason I can own because there's not very many houses. Yeah. They look at the population. I'm well, like, you know, they probably didn't figure the one on Timber Ridge there, but you've got to go down Campbell yeah. to get to it. I mean, there's no other way to. But there are several houses on it, the road to the left there. Yeah. But I can't remember what's the name of it. Timber Ridge Road. Timber Ridge Road. But Campbell Road just got two houses. Yeah. Damn. Very but, but there's probably six or seven on that other one. Yeah. But like I say, you've got to go down it to get to them. I mean, it's bad. It's about as bad as any I've seen. Yeah. We passed on it, passed on a pot mix, but you can't build a road with a pot mix. I mean, not when it's totaled. 
we need a motion to accept these and send them back and get the secretary to sign them before the work gets started. I'll make a motion we accept them, Judge. I'll say Motion for Magistrate Richardson, second Magistrate Waddell. I'll roll, please. Magistrate Richardson? Yes. Magistrate Waddell? Yes. Magistrate Johnson? Yes. Magistrate Holt? Yes. Magistrate Garner? Yes. Now we've got some road changes. You want two or three? I think it's just for 911 mapping, and one of them is to correct the length of the road. Uh, the first one is just a name change Sunrise, the old road name is Sunrise Landing Road. It's just going to go to Sunrise Landing just to match the 911 addresses. Do you want to vote on these individuals? Yeah, we'll vote on that, okay. It's in District 1. I need a motion to accept that change. I'll make my motion. Motion of Magistrate Waddell. Second. Second of Magistrate Garner. Call the roll, please. Magistrate Holt. Yes. Magistrate Garner. Yes. Magistrate Richardson. Yes. Magistrate Waddell. Yes. Magistrate Johnson. Yes. Second one is Cooper Creek Spur Road is what it's called right now. We're just going to Cooper Creek Spur. It's in District 3, and this is another one that's just correcting the name, road name to match all the 911 addresses. I'll make the motion. Magistrate Johnson, second, Magistrate Waddell. <coughs> Magistrate Johnson. Yes. Magistrate Holt. Yes. Magistrate Garner. Yes. Magistrate Richardson. Yes. Magistrate Waddell. Yes. Uh, the third one is Turkey Trace Drive, just going to Turkey Trace. It's also in District 3, and that, again, is correcting the road name to match the 911, 911 addresses. I'll make a motion. I'll second it. Motion to Magistrate Johnson, segment Magistrate Richardson. Call the road, please. Magistrate Waddell? Yes. Magistrate Johnson? Yes. Magistrate Holt? Yes. Magistrate Garner? Yes. Magistrate Richardson? Yes. The last one is, this is just an actual uh, extension of the road uh, it's to correct the, the mileage on it. It's not an extension, it's just to correct the mileage on the road list. It's Sea Woolridge Road. Um, it, it needs to be extended by 350 feet, so it should become, it'll be 0.51 miles uh, in length. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Motion to measure Garner, second to measure Hordell, to extend that to 350 feet from Sea Woolridge Road. Call the roll, please. Magistrate Holt? Yes. Magistrate Garner? Yes. Magistrate Richardson? Yes. Magistrate Waddell? Yes. Magistrate Johnson? Yes. Okay, that's other business. I'll get into this. Looks like we've got one, two, three, four, five, seven people that have signed up to talk about the golf cart petition. I think we tabled it last month. Uh, if you want to send somebody up and say a few words, some of you are welcome to. Okay. I'm Mitch Nobles. Uh, we're all here to show our support for this ordinance. I see you can see there's more people here now. Uh, we tabled it last month to try to get some more information. I don't know what other information you can get besides what the law says on it that we're trying to get passed. Uh, you can see if you look back at it, it's not kids that are really interested in this. It's some of us seasoned adults. So, if you would, I'd like for you to bring it back up and pass the ordinance. Okay. And I'd like to answer any questions or anything you got about it. First of all, I guess before we go into the dra drafting ordinance, I need to see if the court's got enough votes to proceed with it. I checked with Wayne County, our neighboring county, after last month's meeting. They had, had the same situation around the lake. They brought it up. Uh, one magistrate was pursuing it, but it failed to uh, pass due to second, Well, so. you know, we got into this last time here, and, and, and this isn't just about driving a golf cart down to the lake. I want, you know, everybody's saying, you know, some of these roads going down to these ramps are dangerous. <coughs> right. One, if you think a road is too dangerous to drive a golf cart on under this law and this ordinance, you can say you can't drive a golf cart on that particular road or in that area. So that can take, you know, some of the concerns off the other. Um, this, for me and for a lot of people who are here, this is like a neighborhood thing. That we want to be able to legally ride our golf carts to go visit my neighbor, to go visit my brother, to go visit somebody else. Uh, I can tell you, I've been diagnosed with degenerative spine disease, so I can't walk to their house anymore. I'd much rather go out and get in my golf cart and drive down there than have to go out and drag a car or a truck out of the garage and drive. So, Yes, that you pass that you come up with this order. Okay. Yeah. Got a question? Sure. 
If we don't pass it, you're still going to do it anyway? Probably. Yes. And then I'm going to go down and see the sheriff. But like I told you before, <laughs> 44 years, I never got a ticket while I was a cop. I don't want to get one now that I'm retired. I'm not going to be looking for you, I'll put it that way. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. It, yeah, but like, like I said, we, you never know, and you don't know if we're going to get a trooper come in here from somewhere and going to stop somebody and ride with a citation. Uh, if they get somebody that's not complying with the law, drinking or whatever, write them a citation. But if you stop me, I got everything you need at what the law says. So that's all I'm asking for. I'm sure that's what these other people out here want. Well, I'll ask the court, does he, you know, do we need a motion to pursue this first? I'll okay. make a motion. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm just going to ask the county attorney what he thought about it. I didn't mean to cut you off. Right. Well, I mean, are you, you know, the, the statute provides, of course, you, you know, the, the ordinance can be for the whole county if that's what you want, or the statute can be, I mean, the ordinance can be for a particular road. I mean, it, it doesn't have to be all roads blank. It can be for whatever you name the road and it could be for particular that road and each each road that the court wants to bring in at, at whatever time could do that did you see what I'm saying so yeah. you're not you're not a blanket over the whole county you're basically saying if you, if you chose now you can do that but if you chose to do a road or a series of roads or two roads or whatever that that's possible too and it would only be limited to that particular road if it met all the specs of the of the statute can you also do it on flip side to exclude that road you could write a blanket for the whole county excluding this road uh, that's that's up to them I'm just Jamestown saying Town sure you can you, you you the city of Jamestown down there is though because they're a trail yeah. town they, they, yeah. well, they, but I mean they, they, they can come in here and drive within the city limits right. uh, due to being a trail town. Right. So. I had three calls on it after we had the meeting last month, and they uh, they wasn't happy with it. They thought we ought to enforce the law and get them out of the road before somebody got killed. That's yeah. that's what this you know that's the calls that I had. I had 183 responses to mine on on social media that were all for it, and only 22 that were against. Yep. Yeah. Well, can we just bring Lily Creek Ramp Road and Scott's Chapel and Harbor Springs and... If you want to make a motion. I'll well, make a motion. And then uh, you have and to get a second in the motion. You've got well, from other areas of the county well, that are interested in it. What other county? What, what other part of the Creek Resort back there? Huh? Back in there. I know they used them all back in through there go to swimming pool. If I may, I'm, I'm his brother. I live in the same neighborhood. Y'all can limit the 25 miles an hour under. You're going to eliminate all state and county highways. You're going to keep it in the residences and the residential areas, which is what we want. Mm -hmm. I got to sit back down. Go back. Yeah. And that's all we need to do. You, we, we don't expect to see someone going down Highway 92 or Highway 80 on a golf cart. But I, I may say, I, I've heard the comments too that there's a truck pulling a, tra a boat going down the road what do you do when you pull up behind a farm tractor with a hay with a trailer full of hay on it some of them runs over them you got to get hit on a farm tractor or a golf cart <laughs> it, it doesn't matter one way or the other yeah. you're going to slow down for it but while well, i'm not asking it to be on the highway i'm asking for residential only which we can limit it to 25 miles an hour and then we're not worried about our, our county, our main county roads, and we're not worried about our main highways because they won't be out there. But if we, we, we limit it to the residential areas, then I don't, I don't really see the problem with it. Well, they're going to ride them anyway. I made the motion, so does anybody want to say? Oh, okay. Go ahead. Uh, if it's just an extension with they said, we are in secluded acres, and I, you know, familiar with Campbell Road and everything. And, and it's the same thing. We ride our side by sides and everything. And the roads are so narrow that even if you're just pulling two trucks, somebody has to go off the edge of the road to get by. And if you've got two people with boats, somebody's got pretty good backing up to go to find a spot to pull over. Mm -hmm. So if people bring their things in and we're down in this area and just riding huh? side by sides and golf carts, it lessens the danger of somebody going off the road into a ditch or this or that. So, side to side wouldn't be allowed. I know, oh, really? No, it's but, just golf cart ordinances. So okay, and, but that's why we were here to see if you could take into consideration yeah. something like this. So. 
but that's what we were doing, just asking that secluded acres could be in consideration for some kind of ordinance for that. Where's that at? Down by the Campbell Road is secluded area. area. My, <coughs> my name is Salem Pill, and we are Lee and Ted Mowry Road. And to go to the main road, I have to go to Campbell. The Campbell is so bad, I can drive my truck. Yeah. Yeah, I know we can fix it up. Uh, maybe a month ago, and it's it's bare, but you can still see the big part of all everywhere. It's what I tried to call. You talking about Campbell Road and Jabez? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 I believe you were talking about. Yeah. This. Yeah. It's it's, it's bad. Bad. very bad. But, but it, it, I agree 100 percent with that. It but, was turned uh, in. We'll turn it in again on next year's list. Yeah, but, yeah we was just kind of we could use the golf carts and side by sides with less than traffic. But it, they're narrow roads. You two people can't hardly really pass without somebody going off the road. So that's what we were asking for an ordinance to ride our side by side. Sounds like side by side you just don't take into consideration. Well, that's that's what they that. said last week or last month. They were just golf carts, not yeah, side by sides, four wheelers, razors, just golf carts. Yeah, because yeah. our area is completely backwards. But if you if you'd have been here at the next meeting, you would have heard Mr. Wilson, which is an officer. He would have told you how many children he catches on these things. I'm talking about I'm talking about kids. Oh, I, yeah. I understand that. I live you know, in and home. if we yeah, sit here and sign an ordinance and eight two or three kids get killed on a golf cart, I'd feel a little bit liable. Right. Oh, I understand but that. I that. Yeah. So that's the reason I'm against it is uh, is the factor of. Uh, yeah. I think you should put an age. Uh, it won't matter if you put an age on it. Right. Well, Nobody listens to it anyway. Them, I golf cart, that. them golf carts are babysitters. We all know that. Right. But we were just bringing it up to see. You know, well, I'm saying what I appreciate it. I'm just saying the done. position that you put us in. Well, is right. it, is I it, understand no. the responsibility. You know what I'm saying. Okay, okay, and then, well, you said it was okay, and that, that, that yeah. Is it mostly golf carts over there on camera uh, back in there? Is it side by sides or four wheelers and a little bit of yeah, razors? A little bit of everything over there. But really, I don't think you know it's like the sheriff. Or if you're an adult and you're going down the road in a golf cart, you're acting on I don't think it's going to bother you no way. Well, the sheriff stopped me twice and he said, You should don't ride. The, well, the game work. The game work. He said, yeah. You should don't mm -hmm. ride. I said, Okay. But he did not say nothing. He didn't. He said good night. It was very nice. But what he's gonna do the third time? Give me a ticket. Uh, well, is that we we just well, want he, to bring he, 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 he actually said last month here that that he didn't write him up, didn't he? Unless wow. they, unless there was yeah. alcohol. Unless there was alcohol involved. Yeah. involved. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> but now we're just saying you know, where we stand with this issue and if whether anything could be done for it. I don't think. Derek, have you wrote any tickets on anybody on golf cart? Like have said, you prosecuted anybody? At my anybody office cases? myself, we only get calls most of the time on four-wheelers or side-by-sides. Yeah. That's raising the cane on the road, getting on, tearing up everybody's yard or something like that. I've worked almost 30 years in law enforcement. I don't guess I've answered one to two calls about a golf cart, if that. <laughs> right. And I'm just yeah. speculating at that, you know, in 30 years. Right. But, uh, you know, and I understand the county's changed too, and I understand that you've got more people coming into Russell County that, that's retired from other cities coming into Russell County. I understand that. Yeah. Well, where, where they're at over there on Cave Spring Ridge, they could ride on county roads. The calls that I've got about over here by Alligator 2 or Lake Cumberland Marina there is on State Road. Where, they, where they're riding them, and like I say, I got three calls right there right pretty close to the store there they thought we ought to get them off the road because if somebody's going to get killed on them you know and that's that right, was the cause. we're talking in just far area oh, not now yeah. we're you know i know like where you're at over there you've closes got and you know because basically the, there's not really through traffic but traffic down there is basically the people that have their summer homes and us that live here that's in that area so yep. it's not something that you know well, they ride them down at Lily Creek Ramp, and Scotch Chapel, and, you know, Harbor Springs, all down in there. They ride them all the time, and down there at Pumpkin Creek. Right, right. 
Yeah. And it all goes, you have to have consideration yeah. for people and basic knowledge that you can't be as a nut and go out there and tear stuff up and you, know, you can't go flying. It's basically yeah. transportation, like well, you know, parking, driving your truck and everything is getting so crowded. That's right. Well, it's I, just I, a I made to us that live so. there. So. We've got three other people that signed up. If you want to speak, you're welcome. I'm not sure which one's which. I had seven well, people signed up. I think we've had four speak. So. Well, anybody else wants to say well, anything? You're welcome. Back to row right up. here is all. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. But we just want you to take into consideration. Okay. And, you know, like I said, uh, your hands are tied if they're tied. Do you uh, do you know of any anybody that's got a ticket over there in your area that's actually got a ticket? Uh, well. Just the people that need I it. did hear that the one boy <laughs> did get uh get written no, up and they came the, in and I think it was out. dismissed. Yeah. Yeah. But, and that's the problem is the people that want to come yeah. down here and think it's a racetrack or something. Yeah. And, uh, well I know the I know the, the officer and, and I know he patrols over in that area and he, he stood right there where you're at last week and said that he hadn't rode anybody up unless no. it was alcohol related. So I don't know if that'd uh, be the case. Yeah, no, I've been living down there a year and a half now, retired and moved down there, or resident down there, and I have not run into the man yet. <coughs> uh, so, so no, I'm not saying anything about him. He's got a job to do just like everybody else, and <coughs> can't abuse, uh, you know, think he's not going to do something. If we're out there creating a problem, you're a problem. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's what we basically just want to see if there's anything can be done about getting an ordinance. Me, but where we are, we're like what a uh, quarter of a mile from the lake. Right. So you it's kind of a, cha a challenge to get in your vehicle, drive down there just to see the lake. I mean, that's how close we right. are, and we we're actually considering right. where the state maintenance ends. I mean, the roads get pretty rough. Right. The state maintenance yeah. and like Cape Springs Road, that's that's really the area that we were concerned. How long you been over there? A uh, year and a half. Well, we well we've been re we've years. been retired, moved yeah. here. But you're talking about the road being rough after the end of the state oh. maintenance. Yeah. I've been in 20 yeah. years as dirt whenever yeah. I took I over. That, so, I started <laughs> coming down here. I mean, it, it's still rough. Don't get me wrong. Oh, it's it's still rough. I've been down here since 1970. So you, you're familiar. Yes, we never yeah. had any calls. They ride wheels. Gary, don't you do anything over? Yeah, right. We have been involved in the system and it's up to residents themselves to patrol. Oh, wow. yeah. And I wouldn't have a problem saying something to somebody, but it would just be a real convenience <laughs> to us. People well, live if, here if, if it was just that area right there, I think it would be safe. But but the thing about it, you've got a lot of them out on the state road, and once you uh, once you give them past the ordinance, there are going to be more of them on state road. Right, right, right. You know. So yeah, even like if we just come from yeah, the end of state maintenance or yeah. an area from here. It's back. five point three miles from end of state maintenance to Campbell Landing there. So I mean, you know, I'm very <coughs> familiar with it. You've yeah, got a lot yeah. of well, a lot of territory. Yeah. 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 Plus the ramp down there too is getting bad enough that people shouldn't even be putting their boat in down there because it's getting pretty bad. We've so. had that discussion the last three or four years and I've still not found any money to fix it. Right, yeah, everybody's budget's tight, so. Yeah. But that's what we want to do is just <laughs> bring it up to you and see if you can do it. Hell of a land. Appreciate your time. Yeah, I feel like we land in all the time. Okay, yeah, we've got a motion for a measure for the to just pursue this uh, ordinance. Yeah. Okay, do I have a second? I ain't got none. I mean, I just think it could be a bad thing. I do. I, I think it would open up a can of worms. I, and I've got a, I've got a ramp in my area, but I, I haven't had a call like forward or, or against it, either one. Okay, we got a motion to measure what else? It dies due to lack of a second. So we'll move on. Okay, other business. Okay, thank you. Other business. I've got, uh, and y'all familiar with this, I think, uh, Mr. Bill and Crew, or the drug department, got the <coughs> CDL. Uh, yeah. Mm. He's requested now the JCDLs to transfer yeah. to the road department. We've got an open there that Mr. Fowler left. Remember that, Phil? Uh, the court would have to do that. Yeah. I like a motion with the willing to recycle over to the road department. Motion 
measure really <coughs> some signal measures or what else to yeah. him transfer effective or just leave Yeah, immediately. Magistrate Holt? Yes. Magistrate Garner? Yes. Magistrate Richardson? Yes. Magistrate Johnson? Yes. Magistrate Waddell? Yes. Okay, we've got another young man's on the literacy grant program, Harley Davidson, Bill. He's all about uh, HM, you want to come up here and explain about the gentleman that we've got on litter control that's wanting to transfer when his grant money ends to the recycling? Not money only lasts till probably uh, depending on how many bad days we have. We can't get out. Probably October, November. Last year I made it last all year because of the COVID and stuff. We had a little time off. So, so what we did, we we got one over the recycle. Is this one you that's wanting to transfer? Judge, I didn't hear. Yeah, he didn't hear. Har you. Yeah. Harley Davis. Harley Davis. Yeah. Okay. He yeah. works in litter control. And he's part or seasonal, but he's wanting to go to. Uh, well, he's been he's, uh, he's been trained. They've been training on the uh, uh, animal control. Yeah, he's also uh, been the assistant uh, because uh, animal control. Michael officer. can't work all the time, and I don't let him go out on weekends unless it's a, a dog bite or a law enforcement officer has one or something like that. We just because he's just running too much overtime stuff. So we got him and been, <clears throat> been letting him go out. When it was raining or bad on the litter day, I worked with Michael on it. He's, he's, he's good. I used him last weekend because Michael was on vacation down. And uh, I sent Hardy out a couple, three times. He's good. He knows how to handle them. And, and <coughs> so I thought that what we would do is put him part time when you need him, like on weekends or vacation or things like that with Michael. And then the other time, I just give him in the recycle. But once the litter stuff runs when out, it runs he, out, yeah, you'd recommend it's a seasonal it thing, and it'll run out when my money runs out, and I only get X number of dollars to do all year, and uh, when you've got I've got uh, three working on it, so it usually fades out about, about November, October, November. So time I go all the way, but I don't I won't know until. But then he would go full time at the restock. What you're yeah, except if we had to use him for a dog, out if Michael was gone up, or something like that. I mean, I'm, on weekends, if he has to go out, I could he, he would agree to yeah. you know, go out on that and then just use comp time to keep down the overtime and stuff. But he wouldn't be if Michael was there during the day, he wouldn't be going out with mm -hmm. him. It would just be if Michael was not there, yeah, he'd be, he'd be there, or unless he had a, a problem, you know, sometimes you need back, you, know, right. you need more than one. You know, right. and, Different times, some of the deputies will tell you that too. But yes, there you get in some pretty bad situations sometimes. I'll make a motion that we allow to transfer one yes. litter money around mm -hmm. there. Got a motion because they're not open on the weekend. You got a motion from Major Waddell to allow him to transfer over to the recycling after his seasonal money runs out. I'll second, second, Major Johnson. Call the roll. Magistrate Waddell? Yes. Magistrate Johnson? Yes. Magistrate Holt? Yes. Magistrate Garner? Yes. Magistrate Richardson? Yes. Okay, you know the and, like that. There's a time, too, that even in the winter, now December, and so when we're not on duty, there's one of you all at a different time to call someone who's dumped a bunch of stuff, and I yes. have to get somebody to go out and get I'd probably pull him out then uh, to go, and, and because he'd be licensed to use one of our vehicles and go pick up the garbage because he can't lay there, you know, through the yep. rest of the winter or something. Early spring's a bad time too before we start in. So that'd be fine. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, alcohol report looks like it was down. Uh, the total sales were down about 30, about 38,000 for the month, for the month of June. And, uh, Jamestown received uh, $1,340. We paid them by the agreement, so uh, they was off just a little bit. Okay, that's all I've got. Any y'all got anything? I've had a call or two on that solar farm wire, and I never heard too much misrepresentation. <coughs> I don't know whether they're getting their information talking about how much it's going to cost the taxpayers and like one and a half million dollars and everything. Basically all the county did was sign 
for them to sell bonds, if I understand it right now, right, right on that cave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we and uh, with our, uh, the rest of it, you know, is people. really left up to the farmers. I don't know where they're getting their information, but they're going to have a class. When is it? 23rd of August? They're have a public hearing here on, uh, at 5 o'clock on Monday, August 23rd, the public service. But they need to... Uh, and it'll be here at the courthouse at 5 o'clock on that date. So yeah. anybody's got any concerns, they need to come to that public hearing. Yeah, there you go. It's 23rd of August. Yes, on Monday, 5 o'clock, local time. I make a motion to adjourn. I'm saying. Richardson, Salem, Madison, Cardell, adjourn. All in favor, say aye.